Hello and welcome back. It's Mina. Hello. How is how's it going? Hi. For this video, I filmed all the dinners that I had last week, uh, plus also some additional food highlights that I just couldn't help but share. The reason I'm here in person today is because I've got some some news. You may or may not know my fellow YouTube colleague Ruby. Ruby Granger. Her channel is one of my go-to comfort channels on YouTube. She's all about productivity and coziness, studying, learning, history. So I would highly encourage you to check her out if you have not done that already. But anyway, she's got this stationary business called Pumpkin Productivity. And she reached out to me a couple months ago asking if I could design a meal planner for her. I was, I was fangirling quite a bit when that happened, not gonna lie, but of course I said yes. And then, yeah, we went ahead and designed a little meal planner together, which like looks super cute, first of all, and I think it can be really helpful. So on the left side, you've got your days of the week, and then in the middle, we've got these two note boxes that can be used for multiple purposes. For example, you could write down um, the foods that you have that you need to use up, or recipes that you want to make in the future someday, your own recipe ideas, recipe video blog references or, or something like that. And then on the right side, you've got a tear away shopping list. You don't need scissors or anything. It's got this little line of perforated paper. I think that's what it's called. It's got a really helpful key at the top for fresh, dry and frozen food. So you can color code your ingredients and get your shopping done as efficiently as possible. And at the bottom, you can write down your budget and total spend so you can keep track of, you know, how much you're spending every week. The paper is all sustainably sourced as well, which is cool. Um, and that that was just a little ad for me, myself and, and Ruby. That night, I met up with my two girls, Nina and Artemis in Friedrichshain. I was a bit early though, and so to kill some time and escape the heat, I went to Vegans for a bit, which is this fully vegan supermarket, aka my happy place. Yeah, there's always interesting stuff to see there. Like these, vegan Kinder Bueno. Those are dangerous. Right above that store, there's Secret Garden, a plant-based sushi place. There you can get all types of fancy flavors. Those crispy bites and the ones with truffle sauce were my favorites, for sure. Although this was delicious, I think we all wished we had ordered some more. This was definitely more of an evening snack than anything else. Luckily, I'd picked up these coconut oat chocolate chip cookies at the vegan store a bit earlier. But yeah, it was, it was a really fun night regardless. We'll get to Tuesday's dinner in a sec. I just had to quickly share these drinks that Artie and I had that day. Um, so these are iced matcha berry lattes. So there's strawberry puree at the bottom and then the matcha milk on top. I really want to try and make this myself. I bet it's super easy. I had quite a bit of raw shredded sweet potato left over from a previous recipe shoot. So I sauteed that in a nonstick skillet on medium heat with a bit of oil. Stirring frequently, especially in the beginning, allowing everything to cook for around 6 minutes total. In the meantime, I put together a little almond dressing, made up of almond butter of course, white wine vinegar of course, tiny bit of olive oil, garlic powder, vegan Worcestershire sauce, sriracha, and a tiny bit of water to thin it out. To the cooked sweet potato shreds, I then added brown lentils, some of the previous night's kimchi, and then also some everything but the bagel seasoning that a friend from the US sent me. It's basically just roasted sesame, garlic, and poppy seeds, I would say. I let this cook for another two minutes or so before transferring everything to a plate with baby spinach. Then the almond sauce went on there. I ate all this with um, two of these tofu bites I'd made the same day. So their crust, if you can call it that, was shredded sweet potato. And then the rest was this baked tofu cream cheese type filling. Those tasted fine. I wasn't fully convinced by them though. And so the next couple of days I spent modifying this recipe more and more until I was left with this hash brown ricotta breakfast meal you may or may not have seen in my, like in, in last week's video. Anyway, back to Tuesday's dinner. It was very nice. Wouldn't mind eating again. If you're wondering, I'm reading the first book of the Heroes of Olympus series here. I'm obsessed. I think I like it better than the original Percy Jackson series. 
Okay, so Wednesday's dinner was these delicious veggie toasts. First off, I brought my pan with a bit of olive oil to medium heat. Then I added a yellow pepper and an old leftover red pepper half. I let everything saute for about six minutes before adding um, some more leftover kimchi from that sushi place and some baby spinach. I let this cook for another three minutes or so and then seasoned this with uh, nothing but the everything but the bagel seasoning. And you know, since the kimchi is so flavorful, there's really not much else to add here. In a separate bowl, I mashed up half an avocado with a bit of lemon juice. Then mixed in some of this vegan sour cream and season everything with some seasoned salt. The bread here is also from a recent video. It's made with whole wheat flour, spell flour and oats. So good, I'll make sure to link that recipe down below and up above. In conclusion, Wednesday's dinner was very good. Thursdays, not so much. I spent all day working on this tofu sweet potato bite recipe, trying my best to get it right. Um, Flavor-wise, these guys were amazing, but they just kept turning out too soft and delicate. It was impossible for me to get these out of the pan in one piece, let alone just hold them in my hand. Yeah, so I essentially just snacked on these things all afternoon and all evening. Um, it, it's safe to say I was 92% tofu by the end of this day. Friday was quite stressful. I had four recipes left to film. One of them I just dropped at one point, like it fell. And besides that, there was just lots of errands to run. Um, all because I had a flight to catch in the evening. Yeah, my, my first flight in two years, I was so excited. I took this super yummy teriyaki-esque saitan rice and broccoli dish with me. Make sure you've got some rice going somewhere, cooking somewhere, I mean. <laughs> then start working on the fake meat or just skip that step and use tofu instead. Mix together some saitan mix or vital wheat gluten um, with various different condiments, kneading everything until it turns into this like meat looking mass. For a more detailed, more in-depth recipe explanation, make sure to check out my Percy Jackson video. I essentially just followed what I was doing in that video, however, I cut the saitan into smaller pieces this time and made a different kind of sauce to go along with that, a sort of like teriyaki sauce. So to a small saucepan or skillet with the heat turned off, add some water, cornstarch and mix in the starch, like mix it in well. Then add some maple syrup, some rice vinegar, some vegan Worcestershire sauce, and soy sauce. Oh, also if you want some hot sauce, and then perhaps also some of this vegan umami paste, which can totally be skipped or substituted with miso paste. Bring this up to a boil, stirring frequently, letting it simmer for a good two to three minutes until thickened up then set aside. I know the saitan pieces look so real, it's almost a little disturbing. Once they're boiled, you dry them off with some paper towels and then coat them in a bit of cornstarch. And then you're gonna bring a nonstick skillet with a bit of oil to medium high and add the fake meat once the oil's hot, letting everything fry until you're happy with how it looks for three to five minutes. Mixing that in and letting everything cook for another three minutes or so. In the meantime, I quickly steamed up some broccoli on the side, just, you know, chopping up some broccoli into florets, putting it inside a saucepan with about a fourth of a cup of water, and then you add a lid that has a hole for the steam to escape and let it cook for two to three minutes. Can't forget about the sprinkle of sesame. I, I really just plated this up to get a nice thumbnail photo, but in reality, I had to go like, 20 minutes ago. Wait, did I already mention where I was going? Um, Switzerland. Just to see some people that I hadn't seen in a long time, experience some nature. So Saturday, I woke up in Basel. Here I just thought I'd share some more of the foods that we had. Breakfast was these squash vegan donuts that I brought with me from Berlin. You know, pami bias. Which one would you choose? Then we did some exploring of the city. We walked past this fast food stall and we noticed they sold vegan food. Of course, ridiculous prices, but that is Switzerland. 
So we ended up sort of sharing what we got. A vegan cheeseburger, fries, a hot dog, and this Greek-style salad with vegan feta. One of my most favorite fun facts about Baza is that apparently, once people are finished with work, they put all their belongings into a little bag, like a little plastic bag, jump into the river, and just let the stream take them home. In the afternoon, we got some tasty vegan ice cream, and we also did some successful thrift shopping. I do very much regret not buying this shirt, but at least I got these cute earrings. You may think that I know too much, but... And then for dinner, we got some pizza from this place called Vito. They had, I think, two vegan pizzas to choose from. I just got a super, super simple one with cherry tomatoes, chili oil, and arugula. So, so good. On Sunday, we did even more hiking, um, and then just randomly stumbled upon this adorable stony river beach. Dude, I miss traveling so much. I think over the course of my week and a half in Switzerland, I very much fell in love with this restaurant called Tibits. So Tibits is a fully vegetarian place with tons of amazing vegan options. Yeah, the fried buffalo cauliflower wings and the kelp sauce salad I would both die for. The following day, I made my way to Zurich to spend a couple days there by myself, but, but really I was hardly ever alone. I met the loveliest people there. It was, it was such a fun week. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it wasn't all recipes this time. Also guys, don't forget to check out the meal planner. Um, I'm certain you're gonna love it if you choose to get it. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being here. Goodbye. Call me up for bluffing cause I call you all the time Said she wanna stay so you know that's fucking lies Can't go to the floor